Yes, ma'am. We can start now, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, all the participants. I am Dr. Uma Maheshwari, head of the Department of English, St. Peter's Institute of Higher Education and Research. First of all, I would like to thank our management, Trustee Madam, Vice Chancellor, Registrar, and our beloved Dean Sir for giving constant support and motivation to conduct this webinar on fight against COVID, the power of emotional intelligence. Welcoming is a tradition that is imbibed in our rich culture. I deem it a great honor to welcome you all for today's webinar. I especially welcome our dignified keynote speaker, Dr. Titus Samuel Sundarajan, for honoring us with his presence. Welcome, sir. I also welcome all the beloved participants for making this webinar a grand success. I'm very happy to introduce our resource person, Dr. Titus Samuel Sundarajan, who is a dynamic professor from Sri Sairam Engineering College. He is a well-known soft skill trainer and public speaker. He has conducted so many webinars and web TV shows. No doubt, he is the best suited person for today's webinar, as his immense knowledge will enrich our students to grow more emotionally and intellectually. I welcome you, sir. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, now uh, we can request uh, Dr. Titus to start the session. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can A start. very pleasant morning. morning Thank sir. you. Thank you, Dr. Lata and Dr. Uh, Uma Mageshwari, madam, for a brief introduction about myself. A very pleasant uh, morning to everybody. All the participants who are joining today, yet to join everybody, please, uh, I just register my greetings to you guys. And this uh, webinar is about fighting against COVID with the power of intelligence, emotional intelligence, actually, uh, rightly said. It has been organized by uh, St. Peter's Institute of Higher Education and Research. I bring greetings from the Sairam Engineering College uh, to Dr. P. Uh, Danjayan, Vice Chancellor of St. Peter's University. And also, I bring greetings to Doc, uh, Major Dr. M. Venkatraman. A dean for art uh, uh, sector and then registrar Dr. L. Mahesh Kumar. And I bring special greetings to HOD Madam, uh, Dr. S. Uma Mageshwari. Once again, I greet uh, uh, Dr. Um, Lata Madam for technically supporting this event. And also, special thanks to the organizing team and all the participants. I could see many participants are faculty members and few are from the uh, student side. Okay. So in a uh, in couple of minutes, we will also expect that many students will join us. And this session is going to be an eye-opener for many guys, I'm damn sure. Um, in the meantime, I would like to touch upon something. Um, you know, in this situation, you know, the lockdown is supposed to be extended by the government. Uh, you know, in a couple of hours, we may get the news from the government. Uh, um, okay, so to start with, I begin with my uh, PPT now. I hope my screen is visible to everybody. Is my screen visible? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, the title itself should you know, give you some uh, insight about what the webinar is about. Uh, you know, it is actually when you are isolated, when you are quarantined at home, you know, there are a lot of situations, a lot of emotions will overwhelm you. The emotions are associated with the behavioral response of certain degree of pleasure and unpleasure, right? And I list upon some of the emotions that we all undergo as anxiety, angry, rejection, irritation, tender, scary things in a happy mood, excited, sadness, sorrow, and we feel fear sometimes, disgusting in situations, sometimes we feel discomfort in a situation, some moments are very surprising to us, some moments are very embarrassing, and some moments are, we are, you know, painful, we undergo some mental pain and also boredom, we, we get some confusion sometimes, all these things. Now to list few, I just said something. We also undergo shame and, and sometimes we feel desire and interest in something, all these terms that emotions. The thing is how we are responding to situations and what is the right situation that you are able to respond. 
Okay, so that is all about emotion. Usually, emotion is termed as the positive. Psychological activities. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. So, hope you all listen to uh, the session and I'm able to uh, give my presentation now, okay. So, as I told you already, emotion is all about how you respond to your personal feelings. You know, every time when you are in a situation, you give different gesture and different exposure. As I listed out our, um, in a different kind of response to such a situation, we'll be happy and sad that we all know. That's how we are able to control our emotions. That is very, very important in nowadays because you are living in a house. Um, thank God uh, for uh, the situation. You are spending a lot of time with your family and your child, you know, maybe children. And you, you have a lot of time, you know, you, you live your life right now. So in this situation, you spend a lot of hours with your officials, a lot of hours with your colleagues. But what happened now? You are spending a lot of time with your relatives and a lot of time with your family members. And we are not used to it, actually. You know, uh, in a sense, what I try to convey is, you know, we are very comfortable with office people and colleagues, but we are not that much comfortable with the people who are already at home, our parents. Since the, the situation is actually, we are not, you know, comfortably feeling that when you are at home, when you are managing children, when you are managing your spouse or your parent, grandparent, elderly parent, all the parents, you know, you feel some disgusting moment because your point of view, your perspective about a thought may differ. So a lot of controversial things that are happening around. So I think this webinar will definitely will suit for the situation and you will learn something from our side. And I would like to start with the thing, no? Emotional intelligence people are, you know, very controlled of their emotion, what they express. Suppose if I express my emotions in front of uh, the other people around me, it definitely affects their mood also. So how I'm able to control my emotions? That is the key point for a successful life. And if you want to live a smooth life with everybody, with a good relationship, we have to have the control of our own emotions in front of others and in front of the public. Um, so to lead a successful life, as I told you, definitely the intelligence, you know, how smartly you behave in front of others, how you are able and how you are capable of controlling your emotions and what time you are executing your emotions and to monitor, to manage people, you can also use this emotion as a tool for your leadership scale. So it connects everywhere. So I, I just touch upon with a, a, a famous a quote, uh, anyone can become angry. That is very easy. You know, you could, you could get angry easily. And, but to be angry with the right person and to a right degree at the right time for the right purpose and in the right way, that is actually not easy because uh, the emotions, you know, all in a time, you know, when, when the extreme emotions are coming from your side, from your inner heart, you lose your control actually, right? That's the point here. So we can easily bust out and show our emotions to in front of us, disgusting moments, you know. So say for example, if a power threat happens in the hot summer, you know, very intense, you don't care about what others are in front of you, what others feel like. No, you definitely show your disgust by you know, shaking your body like this and that. And you, know, you, you show yourself that to others that you are not comfortable with the situation. And same way, if any annoying or irritating things are happening around, immediately your emotion will respond. And you do not have control over it. And if you're conscious enough, if you practice enough, definitely you are able to control your emotions. And why we need to be very cognitive and very, you know, control over our emotions? Because it's about leadership. It is about smooth relationship with you and the people around you, right? So let me build upon who said this quote. Can anyone guess? Can you give your answers through chat? I think chat box is available. 
Joseph has said voice is not audible. Okay, I'll check my audio once again. Is my audible? Is my voice audible? Yes, sir. Now it is audible. Can In anyone give your uh, reply to chat? So then I. Yeah, now it is audible. Thank you, thank you, Chitra, Madam, and Joseph, sir, for your uh, valuable uh, input. So then we will be connected with you all the time. Thanks, uh, Shai and uh, Radhika, Madam. Okay, so uh, this famous quote. Can anyone give a guess of who who said it? It's a very famous uh, quote. Now anybody can angry, you know, can become angry, and it is easy actually. But for a different purpose, for a particular person, in a correct situation, you have to execute it because that is what is called leadership skill. Because if you want to get the work done by a people who is lazy, a people who is not at all into the system, you have to show your skill, you know, the emotions to them. So then that emotion will drive them into the system, and that's what you have to be. Very, you know, uh, sensible, and you have to use that tool in a right situation. And this is none other than actually Aristotle, who gave a challenge to the public in a, a book. Anyone can become angry. That is very easy, actually. But to be angry with the right person and to the right degree at the right time and for the right purpose at that right way is not that much easy. So this says that the statement itself says that we have to train ourselves to the situation. It is actually easy. It is not that much difficult. You know, for for that to execute, you have to experience a lot of things. You know, different person have different experience, and different person will have different exposures in their life, and they they encounter different problem every day. In a in a way, so to say, you know, every problem is not same, but every problem will have similar kind of solution. And if you are able to manage your situations, I'm damn sure. You you master over your emotions and your total control is there at you, right? Okay, so I would like to give you a small story, very interesting story, and the story will have a lot of you know the emotional intelligence inside, and of course many of you guys will also would have experienced such a kind of uh, 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 you know things, physical, physical, psychological emotions in your life. I just uh, Neri, please listen carefully. Uh, uh, a, a, a female guy, a fresher, uh, uh, let's say an engineer, maybe a art and science field, somewhat. Uh, a fresher joined in a company. During the probation period, people have given her uh, enough input about the, enough project and how to go about all the stuff in a week, week span of time. So she also quickly. Adopted to the situation, and she learned the skills that is demanded by the uh, uh, the organization, and the skilled stuff she quickly learned from her superiors and also from self learning process. And as soon as she learned everything, she started executing those skills on the present assigned the project. Of course, you all know. That as a professional, everybody will be very enthusiastic company. All the new skills, and she started implementing into the situation, and the project went well. And people are around her, her office, you know, everybody started encouraging her for because she is bringing new concepts, innovative things to our work environment. Of course, everything went well. But at the end of the day, a year later, a price has come. So everybody has to defend themselves that how they are suiting to the system, how they are giving productivity to the project and productivity to the company, right? So what happened? She also presented herself and she defended herself how she is contributing and how much uh, value she brings to the project and uh, the company's profile, everything she narrated, right? And later on, what happened? Some question has come. How to make the children into active engaged? Okay, I'll, I'll answer these questions at the end of the session. Definitely, I hope uh, the last to ten minutes will be allotted for the discussion. So I'll just complete the story. So she was, you know, adapted to the situation and she learned many new skills and defended herself in the appraisal meeting. So what happened after the appraisal? Everybody will be looking for the incentive and promotion. You know, it happens everywhere, right? Maybe at St. Peter's University, or maybe in our my in my college, uh, you know, 
the Sahiram Engineering College or people have joined from the LML institution. You know, Ah, thank you. So some technical problem in voice. Uh, okay, thank you. Sorry for the inconvenience. Okay, she defended herself in front of the Friesel meeting, and of course she, she was expecting a result. Hello, sir. Is my voice audible? Uh, yes, sir. No, Sorry for the technical. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry for the technical uh, issues. Uh, we'll come back. Okay. She defended herself nicely, but the result, what she was expecting, because she has contributed much thing and new skill into the project, and she was expecting a very good result out of her appraisal. To her surprise, it was stating that only moderate. And she was looking around, and every employee, she during a tea time and uh, during free time, she had information from her friends, her colleagues. They all saying that they got excellent and they got incentives and all. She was a little upset about the situation and she went home and then think about what had, what had happened in her life and what had happened in the uprisal. And she was doing her, uh, you know, self uh, estimation and determination what she has contributed to the project. And during self-evaluation, she had undergone that. She consoled her, uh, herself that she was uh, not giving her best. She has to improve like that. You know, after you know, saying to herself that coming with a new spirit and started working at the, second, at the start of the second year. And she started working with utmost care and also bringing a lot of effort to quality to the project and also bring productivity to the uh, company. And what happened? The story goes in such a way. She started increasing her. And second time, at the end of the uh, second year, again, surprise and meeting, she submitted everything. And Hello, sir. You are not audible. I think uh, your network is having some problem. Okay, is there any problem in the connectivity? I don't know. Okay, but no, anyhow. Not so she, is having some problem, sir. My side. Okay, okay, no, okay. Sir. Just a minute, then, I, uh, then I'll come with the other audio. Just a minute. G give me one minute time. Can you unmute, uh, madam? Can you unmute the uh, Academy? So then I'll come with that voice. Uh, Zoya Academy is uh, not connected with the um, audio. And now? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, okay. okay. Is, now is, is, it, is, is, my, is my voice audible? Is my voice audible? Um, some echo is coming. Uh, just a minute. Uh, just a minute, madam. Now? Uh, yes. Okay, audible. Now audible? Okay, 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 okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you for this thing, technical issues, okay. So my screen is visible right now, right? Uh, yes, sir. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, sorry, our uh, participants, uh, uh, we'll, we'll look into that, uh, the technical issues seriously, okay, we'll uh, manage. Okay, she was expecting herself, you know, uh, is the screen visible? Yes, sir, it is visible. Okay. okay, thank you, thank you, madam. Thank you for your reply. And she was expecting a good result on the second time also. To her surprise, it stated that, again, the performance is moderate. So what do you all think about it? So the thing is, you know, we also undergo such kind of, uh, you know, uh, things in our life. And uh, immediately, 
uh, we are unable to control our emotion. One, we may uh, jump into, you know, cry or else we may tell our grievance to our friends and we, we make some chaos in the office room. You know, we share our thoughts. You know, we started comparing ourselves with our colleague. And what were, and to our surprise, she also noticed that the people who have uh, performed very average, they are given very excellent and incentive also were very, very good. But this situation, uh, it persists with her and uh, again, the management said that her performance is moderate. I leave this point at, at this point. Now we'll move on to the, uh, the core subject of that because uh, at the end of the session, I'm going to conclude the story and how to control her emotion and what will be her, uh, your voice is better. Thank you, Joseph, uh, uh, sir, thank you. So now my voice is better, right? Am I very fast in my language? If it is so, I'll just load up. So then you will understand better. Okay. A little louder, sir. Uh, is my voice audible now? Uh, yes, sir. Now yeah, thank you. Very thank you. Thank you so much, madam. Okay. Now uh, I'll conclude this story at the end of the session. I hope a very interesting story. Uh, the, the, the mentality, the emotions of the female uh, employee who joined there would, would have different kind of that. That stuff we will discuss at the end of the session. Okay, what is emotional intelligence? Emotional intelligence, uh, you know, to say it has five key points and these are all five elements to which we have to learn and we have to practice. And to say that, I say self-awareness, empathy, motivation, self-regulation, and social skill. And these are all the five key elements for emotional intelligence. And it was actually first proposed by Daniel Goldman. He's actually an American psychologist. He proposed that emotional intelligence versus, you know, the IQ, IQ versus EQ. Uh, we all know what, what is actually emotion. And we all do not know how to control and where to, you know, showcase our emotions. These five key element points will definitely help us to improve our cells, to be very intelligent, to express our emotions at the right situation. Um, Self-awareness, empathy, motivation, self-regulation, and social skills. So people will get confused. You know, often they get confused with IQ and EQ. Actually, to differentiate that, very, very small, thin line between that, that is actually IQ is a by birth skill. Any person who born with a good gene and therefore uh, the, the ancestors may have good ability and um, you know it's a kind of a technical skill you know it is about your uh, you know uh, the skill that you required for any uh, job to be done but emotional intelligence is not that stuff emotional intelligence can be practiced anybody can learn emotional intelligence out of their own practice it is not by birth skill it is actually a by practice you can develop but IQ is another sense. It is by birth skill. Everybody will differ by their, you know, IQ skill with a with a by birth skills, right? So I hope uh, you are able to understand and differentiate the difference between the IQ and EQ. IQ is about by birth skill, and EQ is any person in the world can develop. And to 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 say one thing about this thing, which will give you, uh, you know, the promotion and which will give you the higher order of leadership in a society either IQ or a EQ. If you ask this question, the answer is to say that you need an IQ to get a job, but you need a EQ to be a leader of the job, to, to lead some gathering, to, lead, to be a leader of a small team, you need an EQ because you have to emotionally control yourself and you emotionally balance and manage people of different thoughts, different walk of life, different skills, different attitude. To manage them, you need an emotional skill. But to be an expert in your field, you need an IQ. I hope uh, the audience is able to understand uh, what is the difference between IQ and EQ. So with that, I'm just going to the key points. First key point is self-awareness. The self-awareness, which definitely give you these four type of leadership skills in you. Self-awareness will give us about ourselves, the wisdom of ourselves, what I am, what I am capable of. And it is giving us uh, identity to the uh, team, identity to the company, what I am actually. And it gives me a good reputation if I know about myself. And it gives me about, 
the leadership brand about myself. If I take a leadership, what all the quality that I bring in, everything comes into picture. These, these four facets of self-awareness, everybody should know. And self-awareness is kind of that, you know, it's an ability to take an honesty, honest look at your life without any kind of attachment to it, being right or wrong, whatever. You know, the thing is, it's a kind of a mirror. I just want to give you some example to that to understand better what a self-awareness is about. So I'll just uh, give this picture to understand better. How many of you stood before mirror and immediately without your conscious, you try to correct your lipstick, you try to correct your hair style, you correct your dress style, everything, you know? Why, what made you to make all these things? You know, at once you see a mirror, mirror indicates what are the right thing and what are the wrong, wrong thing in you. So for, you know, we want to be, you know, good at, you know, when somebody see us, we want to give our good appearance to in front of the society. We always do care about it. You know, we have to appear good in front of others, in front of society. That's what we all do, make up, touch up, you know, our style, you know, this tie and the suit, everything, you know, because I want to give presentation, good presentation in front of others. I present myself in front of others. It, 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 it actually it values and it means a lot of me, a lot of things to me, right? So every people will think about it. So what is self-awareness? It's kind of when you stand in front of a camera or in front of a mirror, what do you do? Immediately you started doing corrections. You know, you do correct your lipstick, you do correct your hairstyle and people, I have seen a lot of guys, you know, next to my college, you know, in, a, in my college next to the restroom, there is one mirror kept for everybody to get ready or maybe get uh, themselves with the correct uh, the tires, all, all this thing, all the stuff. You know, as soon as people see the, uh, the mirror, they immediately jump to correcting themselves for their appearance and their attires. So it sense that if you have a monitor, the monitor will help you to change yourself where you're wrong and where you're right. So self-awareness self is kind, such a kind. It is about emotional mirror. I just estimate myself with my self-awareness. What, what I am behaving in front of us and how do I carry myself in front, of, in front of us and how do I behave in front of the situation to certain situations. It's very, very, you know, value to me. And it sir, is your voice is very low. Okay. Is now audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. So that's a key factor now. So how I'm able to correct myself? What are the strength? Now, as you look at this picture, the two pictures shows you one picture on the right hand side, you are able to see a cat see through the mirror and it is seeing that it is a lion. Actually, cat always thinks that it is very humble. You know, it, it, behave, it, it believe that it behaves like, a, you know, very important, not ferocious like that. But actually, when you do self-awareness, at certain situations, you are actually behaving awkward. You are showcasing your emotions in front of others, which is disgusting everybody. So it is always to have self-awareness before when we go. So how to do self-awareness? That's a billion dollar question, right? To answer with, I want to tell you that, you know, the self-awareness can be improved by documenting yourselves. You know, keep a journal. Every day, at the end of the day, you just sit and write what are all the situations that you have undergone every day and what was your emotion during that situation and how you manipulated the situation, how you are able to manage those kind of situations in future. The thing is, we are not genuine to ourselves. When it comes to documentation, when you write up, then we will write like being, you know, positivity of ourselves, the positive things of ourselves. We deny, we refuse ourselves to document the mistakes that what we have committed during the day. To say that, you know, I'm also admitting myself that I, a lot of time when I write my diary, uh, what had happened throughout the day, I write you know, down all the good things that happened. But I, when, I, it, when, it, when the time comes to write about my mistakes of the day, I just polishly skip that points or maybe hide those things in a, you know, very uh, smooth way. And I just um, skip those things. Even if somebody open my diary, they, they need to spend a lot of time to understand the line and uh, what is hidden in that. 
in that way we were right because we are not admitting ourselves and we are not giving ourselves to the best best thing to evaluate to say with you also have managed you know many students are here you know if some some students are committing any incorrect activity the teacher will ask ask them to write an apology letter or they they will ask ask them to write and you know, narrate the story what had happened now you could see the children or the student who wrote all this thing would smartly skip those things or else will hide those behind the scenes in a smart way of expressing you know they use a particular word to hide themselves from the the scene of the crime i hope everybody would agree this point but if you are open enough if you are good enough to open up your mistakes and admit your mistakes and you know try to uh, get it off and finding a solution for the problem definitely you have to document if you document your mistakes every day and also do the self evaluation that how you are able to present in the next occasion if you do that for about 21 days and definitely there will be a drastic change in your attitude and drastic change in your emotional control because if you document it you start realizing your weaknesses and your strength i hope the audience is able to understand okay one question has come awesome presentation okay thank you miss uh, uh, sai okay now come back to the situation so it is about seeing yourself self self examination is about self awareness is about seeing yourself self evaluation okay again no audio somebody said no audio is that Uh, yes sir audio is there but uh, sound is a little less okay 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 no problem now i'll keep my mic closer to as close as possible okay we'll move on to the next topic because i don't want to you know uh, uh, kick around the bush okay now look at this the next one is empathy you know we we know this word for a long time quite some time even people are you know when when children are crying for something we all immediately jump into them and um, we inquire what had happened we are you know there are different kind of situation that you all seen when somebody is in sorrow they are you know very you know uh, unexpected untoward events happen in their life they'll be you know emotionally overwhelmed they are unable to control they burst out into cry and uh, people who hear from them their situation and their story they also join with them and they'll start uh, you know emotionally overwhelmed i want to give you a small example to the situation and you know, i've been watching a lot of movies and daily soaps on tv i hope you guys would also have the habit of watching movie and daily soaps and tv serials right Where, you know instead of looking at the screen if you look at the people who are watching that you know their emotions is very very interesting to see and you'll jump into love and you know, i many of many of the time i i watch the people who watch right and one situation have come on the screen in a cinema one a hero has come in the screen and he started proposing a girl and the moment when when he is stretching the flower you know the red rose to the uh, the female partner you know the people who are seeing that screen that means the spectator they actually take the character in them and their emotion is kind of they themselves giving the uh, you know red rose to the people in such a way their face gesture is changing and it is an amazing thing you know we quickly adapt to the character and we started supporting the hero right and come back to the other situation if any pathetic any any sympathy is happening on the screen if it is any pitiful and sorrow a scene is going on people started crying and the spectator is also started crying and it had happened many times i watched the people they immediately take the character in them and they are re reacting to the situation right emotional intelligence is not about taking the character in you and feeling that it is actually understand the problem and finding the solution for the problem you know i have another slide to uh, you know show you it works because it acknowledging you know you acknowledge what they say it is not about giving the answer to the solu uh, you know problem it is all about understand the problem i just go to this situation just to uh, this is empathy actually this picture will give you a better understanding what is empathy is all about empathy is uh, it's the kind of viewing the problem in the other's perspective with the eye with the other's eye not your own eye your own eye and your own emotion see the problem in a different way 
if the other person is in a different mood you have to look into the problem with their own eyes then only you are able to see the problem clearly otherwise it is impossible you know i'll just give you some more example to understand it better uh, you know a female uh, a female is working in a company she uh, you know resume home at the late evening if you are a male you don't understand what are all the situations they undergo during the travel during the working place you know as a female they feel insecure insecurity is kind of a emotion and frustration will come you know as a male you can just under you know just listen to the voice and you just give solution to them but you don't really understand what type of emotions they are undergoing what type of you know the frustration what type of the fear what type of the insecurity and vulnerability they undergone right so to view that you must travel along with them and you have to behave like yourself that you are a female if you travel in a train or a bus how many people watch you how many people are trying to harass you all the situations you will understand better that's what viewing the problem with a the person's eye not with your own eye so that is called empathy so after listening to that story you know you you are not supposed to emotionally overwhelmed and join with them to share their feelings and then started crying with them and started weeping with them it's not about empathy empathy is about understanding their problem and taking their you know perspectives and to find the solution for the problem acknowledge their feeling step along alongside them and try to see them from their point of view and after that try to bring them up from their emotion and this quality comes only if you understand the problem you are able to bring out let me give one more example if you see a guy who got injury on a leg you is it possible for you to say that hey it's just your leg just kick out of it and come out of your rest but if 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 people are using the same thing if somebody is emotionally overwhelmed if they are you know under sorrow they say it's all your mind just get shake off your mind and then come out of the situation just like that they just give advice to them but it is actually emotional sickness you know you are em emotionally overwhelmed and the sorrow and pity make you emotionally sick and for that you need a treatment you need a very good answer very consoling uh, you know the words those words will definitely cure them and it is not that you know we may expect them to come back in one or two days but it's not so because the level of sorrow the amount of emotional overwhelm will be estimated only by the people who are undergoing that situation right and empathy is about connecting a need and listening to their feelings and presence and hearing compassionate and give them good alternative to the, all the stuff and you have to show them that you are caring about them right and if you look into this diagram you will clearly understand what is empathy is it is not only taking their perspective it is not only about considering their emotion and weeping along with them it is not about withholding a judgment this is because you have done wrong this thing you know this is wrong in your life and this is right in your life and because of that all these things have happened in your life then then you rectify yourself all the stuff it's not that about it's not about judgment it's not about emotion it's not about only viewing the problem it is connection of all together and finding a solution for the problem i hope the audience is able to understand this concept let's move on so this um, you know picture shows you you know for any type of argument or any type of uh, you know uh, the speaker is not at the mic he's just came out of the mic he is not in a answering mode she is uh, into listen what the audience is expecting from her after the lecture so this is what we have to practice at classes itself if you give the present you know if you present your class with a good concept after teaching everything you have to give five or 10 minutes to listen what the people expect and what they understood so as a teacher you may think lord but as a student students perspective and their level of understanding their level of taking that into a heart is different as a as a teacher we have to look into the students perspective and same way student also i have to look into the perspective of the teacher and they have to look into the problems what has happened in the classroom and rhyme and also in offices right this well suit for every people who are attending today so i'm coming back to this motivation now what is the fourth point fourth point is motivation this is about self motivation now self motivation 
is you know always needed for a leader if you are depressed you definitely your team members will depressed depends on your attitude depend on your emotions on your face your team members will also get affected drastically and you know the situation goes very dramatic you know depend on your mood your office entirely changes i remember a situation then my principal was very you know moody he was very serious the entire day every people work under him got frustrated to meet him frustrated to talk and there were no constructive work done throughout the day because the principal's mood was not good no people have stepped into this room to get signature no people uh, you know would uh, voluntarily go and meet him to discuss with any problem because his mood is not good so if you are emotionally overwhelmed the entire team and entire situation entire company the productivity of the day is zero so you have to know how to react and how to react therefore for that you need a self motivation to start your self motivation for uh, you know I, i could suggest you to improve your motivation first set a goal for a life and next set a goal for every day what is your goal and what is your target for the day that you have to set up if you set up a target your mind unconsciously reminding you your target every time you fix this target you have to finish this work today you have to finish this work day somehow you will be driven to complete the goal of the day so to start with i'll let you know one more thing so you need not set a goal which is unreachable keep a small small attainable and reachable goal for the day and if let it be a very very small thing can consume one hour or half an hour whatever it may be but try to fix a goal if you are fixing a goal it is easy to come out of your emotions faster and motivated towards the work to be done and you will get you will get the work done by the people also from your teammates and to start with you need a idea right to set a goal you need a idea so if you need an if you have a idea definitely you will have a good attitude to complete it and definitely there will be a success and there will be a support from your teammates because you have a target for the day right you are because you are clear cut and you you have a clear picture of what is to be done today and every team and again voice is going low okay again your teammates will understand then the 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 amount of effort they have to contribute and you will get immediately the support from the audience support from the teammates and encouragement from the teammates that's what so if anybody in any of your students or maybe many students are joining here i'm telling you you have set a goal right you wish to attain the goal if you tell that goal to somebody or maybe your well wisher everybody will start at supporting you not only supporting you they will start at encouraging you to complete your goal you know somebody if you are saying that you are taking part in a quiz program or you are taking part in any of the competitions going around in your you know in the society or maybe any of the sports event at once people hear about you that you are taking part in that they will start encouraging you then they will also support you if you need any kind of help you could also get the help from them and that's what about motivation so set motivation is comes because of you know fixing a target and fixing a goal first you have to initiate something without a goal it is very hard to get motivated so to get motivated you fix a goal today at least if you if you have not right so the fourth point is self regulation i quickly complete my lecture so the fourth point is self regulation it controls your words if you are self you know self regulation and self awareness are you know they are uh, governing one another so if you are self aware about yourself definitely self regulation comes into picture you are able to control your word you don't bust out with the nasty words which hurt other body other fellows in front of you you are very 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 cognitive you are very attentive and passion to say something so you are not verbally attacking any people you are tot- you are having holding total control of your emotions and the final thing is social skill i want to give you a good example for a social skill you know you could easily learn from the children the children are very good at social skill they quickly join with people they get rid of ego they don't see any age differences gender or all that stuff they immediately join together they develop the social skill i want to give you a small story now before that i want to just go back to the story about the lady who joined in a company so what was the emotion what uh, what uh, she undergone 
So to narrate that, I could say she was, you know, anxious enough to get more of incentive. She was comparing herself with others and she got jealous. It's also an emotion. And when, when, when all these things come into picture and she self-evaluate herself and she got the self-awareness and finally she made a presentation in front of the appraisal team once again. She, she was not pinpointing everybody that they are not performing well. She is performing well, not that. Instead of that, she gave a presentation about how her project is giving more productivity than other projects in the company and how she was able to help the other project also to get good productivity. After seeing that presentation, the appraisal team given her a very good incentive. This is what, you know, meeting people. You know, you have to meet people one and one and also have to give you the positivity from your side, not to pinpoint the others. Instead of that, if she would have given her, uh, you know, negative points and pinpointing others' mistake, definitely she will be ruled out of the company, right? So that's the solution for the problem. Now, this uh, company is a real story. It's a Malaysian company. You know, it's a corporate company. The company was try dying hard to pick the market up, but it was not the story. The story goes in such a way that, you know, the company were in a recession. They were unable to um, bring the company up. I hope you are able to see my screen now. So the, uh, the GM of the company uh, is not uh, you know, able to uh, give his best to bring the recession and bring the market up and the value of the company is going down. So the owner was very worried about that situation. He was overwhelmed. He started discussing with the teammates what can be the solution to bring the company up again uh, to make it to a track. So he was dying hard to find a solution. And finally, he thought he could appoint another guy who is capable of managing. And this guy is new to the general manager post. He was not exposed to. But what happened, he quickly adapted to the situation and learned all the managing skills quickly. And uh, due to recession, there was a strike. All employer, employees of the company started asking, uh, demanding their hike in their company, a hike in the salary and bonuses. So the challenge is, Okay, I'll share the presentation at the end of the session. So the challenge of the new GM is to you know, compensate and also convince the people. So what the challenge is in front of him is very, very tedious because uh, he, he was you know, new to this uh, situation and he was unable to you know the situation and quickly learned and adapted to the posting and he learned many things. He called everybody who are you know, uh, were trying to demonstrate a strike and he addressed the gathering and he's, he told that what is their perspective. He first listened to the story of the people who are giving uh, the strike. So what the point? They are asking, uh, demanding bonus and increment in their salary. And he was listening to them. And finally, he addressed the gathering in such a way that he said, first, he never said no to that uh, queries. He said yes to the queries. And later, he addressed the gathering in such a way. If you all go and strike in front of the company, media will come and media will capture all the pictures. And the next day, the newspapers will have your picture stating that, that these company employees staged a demonstration and they gone for a, a strike demanding high bonus and recession uh, during the recession period. So which will definitely, this news will affect our social value and uh, definitely the share values and stakeholders will also will get different opinions about our company. And he was actually able to explain that to the employers. And also he was telling that you know, employers, if you stage a demonstration, then media will definitely capture you. And the next day, if I approach any banker for a financial support like loan, the banker will refuse since uh, there is a strike and there is actually recession in the company, how the loan will be sanctioned? The question will be asked by definitely the bankers. And if you are staging that, definitely banker will not release the fund. And I'm also, unable to give you good bonuses and the company will go still recession and we all also have to seek a different job at different position. As a GM, I'm able to seek a good job at different uh, companies. What about you? You think on it. So during his conversation, he had a high contact of the first guy who stood in front of him and he was talking to him continuously. At once he saw, got the eye contact of the person, the person got realized the situation and he refused to strike and also started speaking with the fellows who are standing nearby him. 
all have convinced by his words and the strike was you know, taken back. And he went to the banker and stated the story to the banker that he was able to manage the company and they still manages, um, you know, he just gave the point that company is now started functioning. They are looking for new businesses and business opportunities, every stuff to the banker. Banker was not convinced. And the next time he went to his friend, he was explaining the story to the friend and his friend was potential enough to buy his product. And he convinced his friend uh, in a very competitive market price, he is able to give the product to him. And therefore the deal is okay. And the friend is agreeing to buy the products. And after the friend's agreement, the guy gone back to the banker and narrating that now with another positive note that some client is ready to buy his, buy their products. So by listening that he is also showing the email that he got from his friend and also the documents which are relevant for the sale to complete. And after seeing that the banker is convinced and banker is able to give them a good loan amount. After getting the loan amount, he was consistent enough to lift the company up and the friend is also lifting the company up with some certain note. And the now GM is also lifting the employees with some incentives. Now the story go, goes this way. He got connected with that. So what do you learn from the story? The story says that the GM quickly self-aware himself that his new position is to manage. So his new role is to manage people. And he is quickly learning from the story from the employee's point of view. And also he is explaining his own role to the employee and convincing them. And he is also social. He had a very good social skill and he connected with the people. He also approached the banker with all the time with a positive note. And he also self-motivated to lift the company up. So all the key roles are essential for everybody who, who want to lead your life in a good manner. So these are all the things that you learn from the story. So the next is decision making. In a couple of minutes, in another seven minutes, I'll complete this lecture. I hope you'll enjoy. When it co comes to decision making, is it uh, right to uh, take part in a gambling and take decision in the gambling? Is that right decision? You could also give your note in a, uh, you know, you are, you are a perspective in the chat box, so then I am able to see. So is that right choice or right decision to take part in a gambling? Yeah, of course, definitely it is not good, you know. But is that right choice to jump from a flight? A, a flight is, uh, the engines of the flight is not working properly. It's malfunctioning. The pilot is giving a ca caution to every passenger that flight is going to crash. So, but uh, the distance uh, from the, uh, you know, flight and the, uh, the, the water land is about 50 foot high. And there are some um, stones are also available underneath the water. If you jump, definitely the risk is also more. Is that right chance to jump from that? Maybe with the life jacket or without jacket, life jacket. Even if you have a life jacket or a different, a different life jacket or not available, jumping from a flight is always good, right? So I want to give you a best example. This comedy, you know, this character you all very remember, right? This guy is actually a burglar, want to snatch some gold uh, ornaments from this uh, driver. He was just narrating him, but this driver is saying that he's actually demotivated long and then he want to commit suicide. I hope this guy, this, um, um, you know, uh, picture is very familiar for everybody. This guy is narrating, you know, he want to snatch something from him, but this guy is not in the mood to survive. So what this guy has done after listening to the story, everybody know that this guy broke on the door and jump out of the car. Was that right decision to jump out of a car? Because anyhow, this guy is going to die. He's going to the, he's, he's climbing the hill station. From the hill station, he want to, you know, commit suicide. And this guy want to survive. To survive, breaking the door and coming out of the car is always wise. You know, at the end of the movie that you could see, the car has stopped because of uh, loss of fuels and it is, uh, you know, stopped by a tree. And that guy was also safe. But after listening to that, this character, the comedian character said that, I, I would have taken, uh, you know, to be there in the car to be safe but I have broken my legs and uh, the arms. But anyhow, jumping out of the car is always the right decision because the other situation is not uh, in your control. It is about probability. We do not know the end result. But when you jump out of the car, it's always the right decision. And same way, handling rejection is also a good kind. So rejection is one kind of that. You are passionate enough to attire something and you are being you know, aspiring something. You want to be a life partner of something. You know, somebody, 
these are all different type of situation but if you get a no the answer no from the others that you are expecting definitely you feel that you are rejected and the rejection always you know depress you many people who are in the rejection uh, expect long time maybe they consume longer duration to come back to a rejection to come back after rejection you have to control your emotions and you have to be emotionally intelligent out of all the type of emotion the rejection is the one of the nasty emotion which will make a fellow sick and it will take longer time to you to cure your emotional sickness therefore to be you know very good enough to come back of all the rejection and emotional overwhelming you have to be emotionally intelligent to that okay in any type of offices any type of workplaces even at home working to there it is always not easy because there is always conflict you must know how to manage your conflict i'm running short of time so uh, will the uh, uh, the host can i get one more uh, five more minutes to complete this uh, yes sir you can proceed thank you thank you madam uh, i'm just rushing to complete that if if another 5 minutes i am able to uh, calmly complete this session thank you ma'am okay so there will be a conflict conflict is nothing but argument disagreement and there will be difference of opinion different of uh, you know perspectives and people will not um, come into a picture i'll quickly jump to other um, uh, things you know it is very unhealthy to if when there is no conflict in any institution because the conflicts always gives the component one to talk and the other to listen if both the people are in a conflict or talking 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 therefore there is no constructive outcome of a conflict if there is a conflict one fellow admit the other fellow to talk about his perspectives the other guy have to listen and it goes vice versa the other guy who is talking also have to listen what the others are thinking about it and the good consequence of the conflicts always give creativity to the solution right bring new creativity and also it forces the people to clarify their views because you may think uh, a, a different opinion the other guys also will think different opinion but at the end of the story definitely it'll give you just give you urge you to check yourself whether your point is correct or not i just come to a point like this it gives you people to opportunity to test their capacity for example if i am going for a conflict and argument if my point is clear i'll just try my best to make my point clear or else test myself whether i am correct or not or else i give my some more effort to support my point is correct so just come to uh, i'm just quickly go about so bad consequences always you no know, arguing arguing and goes to violence and just i want to give you uh, these are all the main source of conflicts you know aggressiveness competitive behavior at every company we have competition between the promotions and the incentives you know and then there will be limited promotion therefore everybody will compete and people will be having frustration out of uh, you know this frustration is also one kind of uh, uh, kind of uh, what to say the conflict we waited for 30 minutes more than but no service in a hotel room definitely will people will get uh, <laughs> annoyed about the people service and many people will get conflict because of the new changes are implemented in the company or in the institution right they don't want to go themselves they don't want to come out of their comfort zone if you are not coming out of a comfort zone people start at you know rejecting you therefore it will be a main source of conflict as a youngster many young people will join your company and they bring more bring more uh, new concepts new skill to the company to adapt but people will the senior people always refuse for the new changes and therefore there will be a source of conflict and therefore will be cultural difference there will be caste there will be religion and all the point you know i just want to give you and everybody want a role and status issues in their main role of conflict and attitude behaviors you are my attitude affects your your behavior my behavior and my behavior also affect your your attitude and your behavior again once again affect my attitude it's a kind of cycle and just come back to this picture this is this is the one with that i am going to stop uh, lecturing so uh, can you believe this thing all these are all same as a mathematic teacher nobody will accept even if anybody have little amount of uh, geometry knowledge they don't accept if i say that all are same the reason is they are believing in a different perspective and then they have different concept of understanding about the problem square is not at all a rectangle and rectangle is not at all a uh, pyramid or a, a triangle they don't accept that in point but the truth is all are same 
Actually, it is one side of a pyramid. One side of a pyramid, the bottom of a pyramid is square, the side of a pyramid is rectangle, the other side of a pyramid is actually a triangle. So the thing is, we see the same object in a different way. And we believe that what we saw and the point what we have is correct. Of course, your point is correct. It is similar to the four blind guys who uh, want to see an elephant. They touch the trunk and they say that it's a big worm. The other blind guy who touched the, uh, the leg and he said it's a soft pillar. The other guy who touched the tail, he said that it is a broomstick. But all the points are correct. They were arguing as a blind guys. They were arguing elephant is a big worm. Elephant is a big pillar, soft pillar. And other guy is a big, you know, a bigger pot like that. And every point is correct. But all the points are the indicating the same problem. You have to collectively look into the problem and find the solution. And it's a kind of all conflicts will have these three different choices. You can lose, lose or win, lose and win, win. So what is most important is every conflict will should end up with win-win situation. So to looking for a win-win situation, you must argue instead of arguing, you have to resolve the conflict. So I just want to give you this example. Here, both the donkey want to eat. That means we are expecting good insect in our company. So for a win-win situation, there is a ego between. There is a starving for food. You know, the emotion is starving for food. You know, I have to survive. Of course, all true. But if the, both the donkeys are not compromising, the situation is very hard enough to so resolve, right? So what will be the solution? The solution is, as you said, coherent. Somebody said coherent. Thank you. Thank you, Sai, madam. Uh, the solution is you have to first think how to resolve the problem. First, listen, both, are, both the people are starving for food and both the problem, uh, you know, about survival. So they think and they work together to resolve the problem. So both the donkey gone to the problem. So they try to solve one's problem first. As, you know, you have to expect the support from the employees in our team, in a, in a, in a team or in an organization to solve a problem everybody must contribute their role in the problem. If they see the ego of the problem, ego between them, definitely the problem may not be resolved as the, uh, in a very quick manner. So after finishing one problem, the other guy also will support to so resolve the other's issues also. Therefore, you are able to get the win-win situation. So to gain participation of every individual to solve the conflicts, it is not my conflict is different. My perspective is different. I don't want to get help from others. If you say that, definitely you'll be isolated in a team, right? So state the reason to work on a solution. And then you are able to achieve the win-win situation. So finally, when you have, a, have to deal with the conflict, first tackle the emotion issues. Give out to your angry, annoying, irritation, your point of, you know, the, the culture, everything. First, to try to address the value and the interest of the problem and what will be the end product, the outcome of the problem, how much value it will bring to the company and as to the department, as an individual. That is the only way to address the win-win situation. Uh, uh, thank you for adding me five more minutes. Now I'm able to uh, say thanks to the organizing members who have given me a great opportunity I thought this will be about one and a half hour session, but uh, uh, due to technical issues, we are able to conclude in one hour. So I thank the management of uh, St. Peter's University for offering me this good opportunity, express my point of view with you guys. And uh, if you have any questions, um, I may answer to one or two questions with the permission of the host. Please, madam. Uh, hello. Uh, yes, yes, madam. Go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, the, um, and that one question you haven't answered regarding that uh, PUBG game, how to control uh, children for uh, PUBG games? Ah, yeah. So nowadays, the actually the challenge with the parents in our situation is you are unable to control the children from gaming, right? So as a youngster, when you are a child, when you, when you were a child, you also, you know, found of more of gaming issues. You know, you played carom board, you know, in Tamil, they say palanguri, uh, kadlanga, like that. You know, so many games. You, most of the time, you are engaged in with. And somebody will, you know, started playing with sand. But due to health issues, we are not sending the people out to play with people, right? So, 
i tell you one thing that the matter that i implemented for my own child is i implemented gamifying in every type of teaching and learning process actually there are a lot of gamifying you know pubg is one kind what people are nowadays doing you know we have lot of um, you know puzzle games which will give them a learning process instead of a pubg i bring lot of uh, gamification things in a uh, you know lot of tools are available in net you can download that you know if you say no to the gadgets if you say no technology to the student that means you are boycotting your children or you are separating or you know technically handicapping your children from the technology because when i was a small guy i never saw any computer system but now the situation is everybody must know what is computer right same way the technological advancement must be taught to the children in a proper way to ask them to you know if you want to ask them to stop you have to give them alternatives to them if you want to stop the pubg you want to give you have to give some more gaming wing you know lecture and teaching learning process in that way you are able to switch over their thing and also try keep on convincing them and speaking to them you know in a you know amicable way instead of giving lecture to them you also join with them in certain part you know in a day half an hour or one hour you could spend time and during that time don't lecture them don't ask them to do the work you also do the work along with them therefore they will get more of into that uh, in the activity of learning process and more of doing projects along with you so then your creativity is also improves once my child was asking me a question uh, you know i asked a question to the child why, did you see the moon today it is only half moon what is the reason my child uh, gave a, a very interesting answer to the question she said you know uh, uh, moon is feeling shy that's why it hid in his face <laughs> i was trying her to explain the you know how the lunar you know uh, movements how full moon new moon was coming but the answer was very you know very interesting you know she was about you know emotionally answering that uh, the moon is uh, shining so i started narrating the story with our you know with the same type of you know giving some more emotional point of view and explaining the concept same way you ha- you can avoid uh you know uh, people who are indulging in more of gamification ask them to involve in uh, educational gamification that's a good thank solution thank you sir. thank you so much and i guess uh, um uh, anupriya so are you available one more question ah, is come sir lavan ah yes uh sir we have to because we are having another session at 11:30 people will join in 11:15 therefore we have to wind up anupriya you propose to yeah, talk to madam i'm okay okay anupriya okay thank you thank you very much for joining uh, me if you have any personal views and questions ah, yes. you could join uh, um, my social media account or my personal um, uh, email id these are all the logos i am associated with i thank sairam institutions i thank zoe academy for technical support i thank cfos medical private limited and amazing grace corporation for all um, technical support these of uh, cfos medical a uh, private limited i am working on digital marketing at uh, agc corporations thank you so much for uh, time thank you so much to uh, the st peter's university department of english for giving me this wonderful opportunity uh, over to ms anu uh, yes sir thank you so much sir um, gratitude is the essence of essence for humanity i would like to thank the resource person for uh, is zealous talk that motivated us to be a i would like also thank the management and the higher authorities uh, uh, who channeled this program to be a grand success uh, i thank our hod ma'am because uh, who will support the uh, whole this seminar uh, last but not the least uh, i thank the, all the supportive faculties uh, who helped us technically to conduct this program uh, successfully i thank one second i thank the uh, great um, each and every participants uh, in here for making our webinar a dynamic success once again thank you for the resource person and technical supporters and uh, each and every participants thank you are you are welcome sir. you are welcome madam ask the participant to give the feedback they kind ah, reminder yes, uh, kindly all participant give your feedback so then we will improve our uh, uh, quality of the uh, webinars in future thank you thank you so much okay sir thank you sir thank you thank you thank you ma'am